Hi, welcome to Leap Taken. This is Mika, and here at Leap Taken, I talk about all things witchy, craft related, law of attraction, manifesting, esoteric, and everything else in between. And today, I'm talking about resources for witchcraft. Um, I am a cottage witch, so some of the things that I suggest to you may have something to do more in that arena, but for me, cottage witchery sort of took on my eclectic witchcraft and sort of just kind of gave it a better foundation to sit on. Um, and I was able to center and focus more because my witchcraft basically has everything to do with um, hearth and home. Uh, but there's still individualism in it, you know, for myself, me, the individual witch, there's room for that. What That's what I love about my practice. But that's not what this is about. This is about resources. So I am going to jump right into these resources. We're gonna start with the books because they're right here. <laughs> so let's get into that. Bam. I have talked about this on my channel a lot. This is a good book to have. I strongly suggest if you don't already have this book, the cover's going to look different from what they're selling on Amazon. I understand the color. I don't know if this is the old one and they got a new one. This cover is actually hidden, but for whatever reason, it's a different cover if you buy it on Amazon. Um, this book is the part that helped me understand energy coding, that part of my magic. Um, it's part of my, uh, it was part of my witchcraft, witchcraft journey in that it helped me to add tech, the technical part of practicing, being a practicing witch. Yes, it added the technical part. Um, understanding energy coding, a little bit of physics, understanding um, how to build my own craft, how to get the benefits of, I guess, the benefits of having kind of like an organized religion with organized religion, you know, what day to celebrate what, you know, what time to do X, Y, Z, when to perform this type of ritual, whatever that is. And this book will teach you how to do that with your own craft, not what you should be doing, but how you even get to the point where you develop, develop um, traditions and spiritual, you know, spells and rituals. Like how, how do you do this? It breaks it all down for you. And it gives exercises and plenty of practice on how not just telling you, uh, but uh, giving you an opportunity to put it into practice. Great book. Seriously, great book. <laughs> okay, this is a twofer. You could get either one, but I'm extra and I got both. So both of these books, I still like to look at these books for inspiration. Uh, the Green Witch's Grimoire and The Modern Witch's Grimoire. So both of these books uh, talk about Grimoires, Book of Shadows, Magical Journals, the like. And they will teach you what to put into it, how you could possibly organize it, and then some extra spells and things like that, how to bless your book and all that sort of stuff. It does all that. I love that book. The, both of those books, they're great for that. Those are wonderful resources if you don't know how to do that. And by the way, if you are practicing magic, you need a place, magical record keeping. It could be online. I mean, something, um, yeah, online in the cloud. It could be like a notes app on your phone. If you're like most Apple users, everything's in the cloud. So if you're on your Mac, excuse me, if you're on your Mac, if you're on your phone, your tablet, whatever, it's, you know, across all platforms. Do that, use that, whatever. If you don't want to, you know, write everything out. If you're not into pretty pages and you just want the facts and just the words on the page, then do that. But do keep some sort of record keeping don't think, oh, I just keep it all in my head. I don't need to do that. Well, I mean, that's great, but you're wrong. Anyway, moving on, <laughs> I kid, but I don't. Um, this book here, Intuitive Witchcraft. Okay, this is a recent resource that I, I think is that powerful, that important. And it's a thick, goody one, too. Uh, this book, I even dog-eared pages. <laughs> I highlighted some. Like, this has become a very... How do I, I don't want to even say very, it's become a book that I can come to that either reaffirms where I, what I already believe or gives me ideas, inspires me, makes me put a different lens on a situation to think about it differently. Intuitive um, witchcraft. This book is like, this is, this is one of those ones I think is essential. It's part of my, like I'm showing you just the books that I think are absolutely necessary to get at this point. I'll probably do another one. Oh, I know I will do a part two. Uh, but these are like the bare bones foundational books that I think are essential to witchcraft. Um, 
in building your practice. You know what I mean? I think these are good. So this is one of those ones you want to definitely get. Um, there are a lot of examples, exercises, rituals, and things like that that you can do. Um, this, this is, get this in your library. And then finally, this one, Magical medium, Mediumship. Okay, also recent, by the way, but here's why. Don't you love that color, by the way? Anyway, here's why I think this book is super important to add as a resource, especially either if you're just starting out or if you've been doing this for a while. By the way, notice none of these books are for like beginners because I'm past that point, so I don't think like that. This is for, honestly, I think you can rise to the occasion if you're not very experienced in witchcraft. I think you can get one. This will whet your appetite. But anyway, this book deals with death. And I think there's a lot of folk practicing who need to deal with death and understand how they feel about it. Because the way that they express themselves um, about ancestors and death, it just seems like there's a lot of negativity attached to it. And I think this is the type of book that can kind of help you reconcile that if you're not sure what exactly happens. Reading this book might um, kind of help you begin to come to your own conclusion and your own theories on what you think is representative of the afterlife, the ancestral realm, and so forth. Also, how to respect the dead, how to deal with them. Um, if you do want to explore in mediumship, you don't have to be a medium to get this book. To me, I think it's just, it was so much information to help me kind of reconcile my feelings on death. And practicing witchcraft, you are definitely going to have to have some definitive ideas on what you think about death and dying. Get this book. Get that, it'll help you start to formulate your own ideas. Notice I'm saying your own ideas, what you feel to be true, how you see it. It doesn't have anything to do with what somebody told you and arguing about this religion, that religion or not. It's not about what I say, it's about what, what do you believe in your heart? What are your people that have passed on? What do you feel like they're telling you? What are you in, uh, intuitively understanding? This book will help with that. I suggest you get this book. It kind of has you thinking of different themes in and around the subject of death um, in a strange, refreshing way. <laughs> uh, but I think it's super important in witchcraft uh, to have definitive ideas about death and be able to articulate it in not just like, it's not a far off theory. It's like really how you feel because people die. People you love and care about are gonna die. You're going to die, we're all gonna die. There's gonna be a situation where you might get a prognosis that's you know fatal and you have to very quickly reconcile your feelings on death like get there now start doing the work to understand it's part of life so you're not going to escape death if there is a way trust me i would have found it by now because i used to be terrified at the thought of dying people who know me knew i like had serious fear about around that death phobia if that makes any sense and it's silly because it's inevitable but um, I actually think it's super important. Like it's really something you have to deal with. It comes up in um, themes within witchcraft when you're talking about spirits, when you're talking about, like I said, ancestors and things of that nature. And then um, how you feel about that. What, do you think those things are negative? Do you put negative associations around those things? And maybe that's why you feel like, oh, well, I'm not really into the paranormal side or I don't believe in all that sort of stuff or that's a little too out there even for me and I practice witchcraft. There are people who feel that way. And I, listen, I respect you, but I think that maybe because you haven't done the emotional, mental work, spiritual work of dealing with death because those things are in and around death and I don't think people want to deal with this. So instead they push it off as, oh, that's too hokey for me to, you know, yeah, hokey. Hokey for me to get into, even as a practicing witch. I know for a fact there's a witch that I actually follow. She calls herself a witch. And um, yeah, she doesn't get too much in the. She talks about lore and things like that in an interesting, beautiful way on her channel. And I love that for her. Um, however, she has at some point said she doesn't necessarily believe in all of these things because it's a little too woo woo for her, a little too hokey, you know, a little out there or whatever. And. Um, when I hear people like that, I don't, I don't think they realize it, but I think that they're basically not, they haven't come to terms with death. They haven't come to terms with their ideas on it. Um, 
and you know, that that's gonna happen. So you you'll reject all the stuff around it because it just feels like, oh, that. Because to go deeper, you'd have to reconcile your feelings. But I digress. <laughs> Those are the books that I think are excellent resources for deepening your witchcraft, for beginning your witchcraft journey, um, and so forth. So now let's get on to the other resources. And now for the other things that I absolutely adore and are perfect resources. Um, well, okay, so here they are. So it's definitely going to be some YouTube channels that I, I mean, I kind of think they're a big deal. Like they are to me anyway. Um, as far as places to go for resources, let me just get this out the way. Anyway, so one of them, of course, is going to be my channel. <laughs> Um, specifically the Cottage Witchery series. Actually, all my videos are really awesome, to be honest with you. But the Cottage Witchery series, um, see the links. The description has everything you need with all the links for everything that I'm talking about. But anyway, my Cottage Witchery series, it's a three-part series. I've separated the videos out. Get into it. It's all leading up to my a workshop in Cottage Witchery. So... It's a self-paced course um, on a Google Classroom platform, simple, easy to follow. When you comment, you can comment so everyone can see, or the messages come directly to me. Either way, I'm there, I'll help you, I'll respond back to you. Um, yeah, so you know, take a look at that. I, I think it's, if you're looking for a more guided approach, if you're looking for structure in your witchcraft, you're gonna really dig that. <laughs> okay, so the next is The Witch's Cookery. So that site is, or excuse me, YouTube channel is pretty awesome. I love her page. Uh, yeah, it's um, The Witch's Cookery. So there she is also a cottage witch and I think like a green witch as well. One of the things I love about her channel is that she is so inventive. The scenery is just beautiful. It like really goes into my, what I expect and what I, <laughs> I think, um, would like more in my life but my climate and where i live just is doesn't look like that but anyway i love her and i like the way she says witch she says it with the v it's not witch it's the v i don't know the w is a v anyway i love her um and i think that she has inspiring videos um for that part of magic for like cottage witchery and natural magic and um looking at witchcraft in a very practical way uh, approach it very practically kind of like me um so yeah that's why i guess i love her so much but anyway the other youtube channel is magical crafting magical crafting there it's you never see the person who does the videos it's always just what she's doing and it's just what the title implies magical crafts and um i learn a lot on there and they're not very long videos uh, so it's like bite-sized information that you can get. And I just, I adore some of the things that she creates. And she even does planning. Um, so you know that I'm, I'm in. Definitely check that out. I think that's a great place to go. A lot of times, I think one of the things missing from my witchy practice for years was just not getting my hands into it. And doing magical crafts is up there. That's spell casting. That's all types of, that's where a lot of the, um, the thing you're looking for to become a real witch, it helps sometimes if you just get your hands dirty and you actually start doing these crafts. Um, so yeah, magical crafting. The next one, as my phone goes off, um, is Lipstick Legion Craft. Lipstick Legion Craft. So love her, love her channel. And um, I'm following her on her fertility journey. Um, not that I'm trying to be on anybody's fertility journal but i've a journey but i um you know i've always had a special place in my heart for you know pregnant women and like wanting to help them and being supportive it's you know i love the idea of maybe becoming a doula or something like that um because i just i i i don't know spiritually speaking there's this i have this connection to fertility and helping people, you know, uh, be able to get pregnant and things like that, um, spiritually speaking. So that's a whole other thing. But anyway, yeah, so Lipstick Legion Craft. I love her channel. I love what she contributes. It's a lot of crafts also and education because she'll explain about 
uh, different things that are going on. And I find that very interesting, like some of the stuff that she talks about. So there's that. And oh, by the way, her grimoire. Oh, my gosh. I love if you got a thing for paper crafts and all that sort of stuff. Her grimoire is absolutely stunning. And I love it. Uh, she used to have an old one that I adore and love that she stopped using that one. Anyway, get into her as well as a great resource. Um, and then the last one is something totally different from myself. It's um, Alwyn Oak. Alwyn Oak. This girl, she's in the UK. Love her channel. Come on, the imagery, the production value that she puts into her videos is off the charts. It is beautiful. And basically, nature is taking you know, like the, the, the main character out of her videos. Um, but I identify with her channel because again, it taps more into green witchery, witchery, cottage witchery and so forth. And I really love, love her content for that. But on top of that, but, and on top of that, you can really learn from her channel, especially if you're interesting about like the Fae, um, understanding a little bit more about you know, just natural magic and um, how to bring that in seasonal work. She's really good with that sort of stuff, too. Um, yeah, she's actually collaborated. I believe she collaborated with the Witch's Cookery. So two of my favorites. Um, I believe they have, I, I think I'm right, they have a collaboration done. But anyway, I love them both. So those are my YouTube channels. And you might be surprised by the YouTube YouTube channels that I recommended. Uh, you might have expected others in there, but like, I'll do a part two of this. This is what, you know, where I'm at, magically speaking. If you were to ask me, what are some great resources? I'm telling you what I think are great resources. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, those are my um, YouTube picks. And uh, finally, the only thing I just want to say um, are about the planners now. So I talked about magical record keeping. So you can have journals, notebooks and so forth as your Book of Shadows grimoire for your magical record keeping. Um, I personally am a planner girl, if you haven't already picked that up from some of my videos. So the happy planner. I like it because you could just pop pages in, pop pages out. It's very simple and very easy to use. Um, they're fully customizable, you know, like I said, because of the way the, the binder system works. Um, and, um, you know, assuming you get one of those hole punches to, to do it. Honestly, you don't, I didn't even always have the hole punch. I would just... <laughs> make you you could use scissors it takes more work and it could be a little sloppy but it's possible but anyway um yeah you get the get the cutter but the thing i like about that is that it's customizable customizable you can turn those into tarot journals you can turn it into your year in a day if you're on that kind of journey you could turn um those books you have the happy planner planners into your spiritual scrapbook. It could be something a little bit more as intended, as in you're planning your rituals, your um, celebrations, you're planning your spells. Uh, if you do work for others, it's a way of keeping track, and it's a, a beautiful, um, inspiring uh, divider pages and maybe some of the other imagery that might be on the side that does it for you. And there's so many different options and things to select from. So, you know, they have the Journey Boho Classic. They have the um, the one, the abstract uh, things. Yeah, color block. It's If you don't know these words, that's okay. But these are all happy planner inspired planners. So yeah, I, I would suggest maybe getting into uh, a planner. Again, you can use them for so many reasons. And that's what I love about the happy planner. Um, again, this is not sponsored. I really should be the way I just go on and on and gush about products. But I really love the happy planner. And um, I have used other systems. It's not that I don't like them. I just like happy planner the most. Um, yeah, so I'm going to stick with it uh, for now. So yeah, yeah, but seriously, for your purpose, you want to just schedule the things that are going on. Schedule uh, the moon cycle so you don't miss it. Schedule certain times of the day so you don't miss it, that you want to do certain types of work and you know you can. So it's like at noon, you know, this is a great time for blah, 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 for sun magic or something like that. Or, um, you know, for seasonal type work, maybe you know, okay, this particular part time in fall, maybe it's not in October. Maybe for you, it starts 
November because of the climate you live in. So November really feels like fall to you. And maybe you have a, sp a specific day and certain traditions. You write that down in your calendar and decorate it and all its witchy goodness. So that's the other resource I think that is super necessary. And finally, a subscription box. I never had a subscription box until recently. Actually, I've only got the one. I'm waiting for my second one to come. But Goddess Provisions is actually so far from what I can see a really nice company. They're saying quality. My first box was quality. Actually, this item you see right here that was in the box is a singing bowl. It's awesome. So I got some great things in that box. So hey, maybe you want to get a subscription box. There are a bunch out there. Some are a little pricey, some not so much. This one is about 30 something. I feel like I got a good amount of stuff for my money. I feel positive about it. I'm, you know, I'm I'm good uh, spending that amount of money. And guess what? If for any reason I change my mind, I could just stop this uh, subscription box. But let me tell you why you might want something like this. It took me time to build up my witchy arsenal. Um, <sighs> arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> my witchy uh, supplies, my my things I use for witchcraft and spirituality and so forth. It's taken time, years. So I'm not suggesting that you rush out and buy a bunch of stuff. No, no, no. What I am suggesting is that there are some things I think are basics that you might want to have in your witchy cabinets, candles of different colors, at least white chime candles, tea light -like candles, you can get into the big glass seven day candles as well. Um, variations on candles. Incense, I think you should have variate, varying incense available to you for different purposes. I think oils, you need to, if you're not going to make your own, you need to acquire ones that fit your purposes for where what you're doing or what you think you might be wanting to do. Herbs, uh, dried herbs, you know, as much as you can, draw them yourself. If not, you're going to want to acquire a nice little collection of dry herbs for using in different spells and so forth. Um, there are some spells that's going to take more of that herb than others. Dried flowers, same thing. Um, what am I forgetting? A magical pen to work with or pens in general. Um, a specific notebook you use for that purpose, just for magical stuff. Um you know, a feather, a bell, uh, a singing bowl, you know, these are the type of things. Um, I'm not saying you have to buy these things no. but um, if you have, have access to them, it, it helps um, refocusing the mind, physically holding what. So when you have the incense going and you're just fanning it with the feather, there's something that happens with doing that sort of action that just, it, it feels right in whatever you're doing. And if you feel good and you feel powerful in your witchiness, it helps with the spell. And that's just being totally honest. A lot of people don't want to come clean on that, but that's just the truth. I like the idea of a ritual robe if possible. Maybe invest in one of those. They are not that expensive you can get them on Amazon I went and I purchased a very nice one so again it's that when that robe comes on and you flip that hood the magic starts it's really awesome so maybe you want to look into that so yeah goddess provision box subscription is what I'm doing of course like I said you don't have to use that company you might not be ready to jump into having a subscription but it could build up your witchy cabinet so that's why I'm suggesting it. So yeah, those are all of my uh, resources and suggestions uh, for right now. Of course, I know I'm going to have more. Oh, you know, there was a book that I forgot. There was a book, The House Witch. <laughs> the House Witch. As a cottage witch, how could I forget that one? But yeah, that's a book you might want to seriously look into as well. Um, I'll end with that, The House Witch. It's your complete guide to creating, because I got that written down, creating a magical space with rituals and spells for hearth and home. And it's by Erin Murphy Hiscock. So check that out. Um, I remember actually reading that entire book, um, traveling from Florida to Arizona. Uh, I read that whole book. It was an audiobook, so that's just a odd random fun fact but anyway um i think that's great especially for cottage or cottage witches out there that's a good one and eventually i would love to be able to tell you about my book it's coming guys it's coming but anyway yeah so those are my resources that i strongly strongly suggest that you look into to help you kind of i think it's not 
I don't speak for beginner witches. I just say witches, you know, for your witchcraft in general, no matter where you are, um, th these could be great resources. So please let me know what you think as well. Do you have other resources that you think I should include or, um, you know, don't put bar me with other people's YouTube channel, like seriously, but like, I mean, you can tell me some, but don't go crazy. Um, books or, you know, whatever the resource is that you just say, you know what, you should get into this, especially if you follow my channel, you see the type of witchcraft that I practice. If there's something out there that you want me to know about, let me know, because I'll look into it and I'll even do a, a review on my witchy reviews where I go live every Saturday, 12 Pacific time. <laughs> um, and I review something. Okay. All right. So thanks again for watching. I'm Mika. This is Leap Taken. Please like, subscribe, share. And as always, again, thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.